Okay, welcome to part two. Uh, in this video, we're going to finish off the template system, and we're also going to code the login page, or well, the form that's going to be on the login page. Um, and I guess we may as well start moving on to the user system if we get that far. So just to sum up where we got put to last time, um, we had sort of been able to validate if the page that the user specifies is um, valid, and if it isn't, we've got a block of code to run. Um, I just want to clear one thing up that I didn't really mention that well in the last part, is the reason we're using this method is that with the file exists way of checking it, because you could quite easily do if file exists, so essentially instead of doing this in array check, you could do if empty get page or file exists, uh, and then the path that you're checking would be, um, let's see, it would be core path, like so, slash pages slash um, what would it be? It'd be get page here, so get page dot page dot ink dot php and that would work pretty much in the same way it'd be checking to see if the page they've specified is actually, you know, it corresponds to a template file the problem here is that you are using something that the user has provided to do a sort of security check um, using this scan dir method, you um, do sacrifice a little bit of performance, so there's a sort of trade-off, um, but you make a fairly sort of, in terms of security at least, a sort of foolproof system, um, because there's no way that some sort of attacker could actually get a file into this folder, um, unless you've got like an unsecured upload form. Um, but we're assuming you haven't. Um, so yeah, that's basically that. So using this in array method is a bit more secure, well a lot more secure, because you remove the user's control over the check, I guess. So that's the idea behind it. Okay, so if we've decided that the user has specified an invalid page, what we're going to do is redirect them to the inbox page, which is just sort of the index. Um, you could also use like a 404 page here, but I couldn't be bothered to make one, so yeah. So we're just going to use do this by sending a header using the header function. I'm going to send the location header to redirect the browser. I'm going to re redirect the browser to index.php and page equals inbox, which we know is a valid page. So this check will be run again when the page loads for the second time on the inbox page and it'll pass, so it'll skip over this if statement. Um, and because we're redirecting the browser, there's no need for us to sort of connect to the database, which is going to be the next thing, and sort of run the rest of the code on this page. So we're just going to kill the script here by using the die function. And there is one more thing we're going to do. Because this um, check indicates that this page hasn't been found, or that they're trying to do something weird by not specifying this value, we're also going to send a HTTP 404 header, which will just sort of tell the browser um, that the reason that the user is being directed is because their, the page that they've requested hasn't been found. So it's just sort of a, something that you should I don't know, you might want to do. I've just sort of included it for the sake of it, really. But anyway, um, but interesting little thing to do. Anyway, so the way we do this is by using the header function again. So just in case you're wondering, you can send more than one header, just like by duplicating the line like this. And the header we're going to send this time is the HTTP uh, slash 1.1. So it's a bit of a weird header. I just looked this up on Google before doing this video. Well, no, before coding this whole thing, but anyway. Um, so the header follows 404 not found but with spaces okay there we go so all that will do now is tell the well it sends the status code the error status code to the browser because an error has happened but anyway that's enough of that so that's our template system pretty much complete um, and as you can see all we need to do to actually add a page is create a new page.inc.php file um, inside of our pages folder because this scan dir will automatically list that folder, we don't need to like manually define a list of pages. Because that's the other thing you could do. You could replace this scan dir with like a manually defined array of pages. But this sort of method makes it a bit more dynamic and a bit easier just to add pages later on. Anyway, that's enough of that. So let's go to the login page and sort of code the well code for that. So we'll go to the login.page.inc.php and we'll just code the sort of basic HTML here. So at the very top we're going to have the page header in a h1 tag, which is just going to be login. Then underneath that we're going to have a form to actually let you log in. So we're going to create a new form tag. 
next action is going to be equal to index.php and page equals login and the method is going to be post. Now the reason I'm actually including the HTML of these pages by the way is that some of the other ones the HTML is a bit sort of tangled up with all the PHP stuff. Um, I don't usually do the HTML. Um, this one is probably quite a bad page to start with because it's fairly, it's almost entirely HTML code. Anyway, so inside this form tag we're going to have some divs to just sort of act as line breaks, more or less anyway. Um, and then inside each of these divs we're going to have a input element. Uh, so the first one is going to be the username, so that's going to be type text and name of user name. And the ID also has to be username um, for a reason I'll explain in a moment. Okay, there we go. So above this we're going to add a label which is just going to sort of well it's going to be a label, it's just going to say name where the user enters their name. So a label tag here and this label is going to be for the username element and this for here corresponds to the ID so that's why you need to give it an ID. And I usually just go with the same as the name, I'm not really sure why. So thing I've picked up I guess. Okay, so that's our label tag and if we just very briefly reload the page now Oh, and go to the login page. Oh, okay, that didn't work. Why didn't that work? Oh, okay, okay. Pro. Um, so, <laughs> wow. Okay. So now that we've defi decided that the user is actually on a valid page, i.e., after this if statement, we need to tell the sort of index page, the template file, which page to include. So we're going to define a new variable called include file, and this is going to be equal to a string, which is going to be the path to the file that needs to be included. So this is actually going to be what I used in that file exists check a moment ago. Um, this isn't too bad, I only forgot one line. Anyway, so it's core path slash pages slash and then the page name, which is get page, oops, and then it's dot page dot ink dot php. Okay, so now the only the final step is to actually include this because at the moment all we're doing is telling PHP. Well, we're not even doing that. We're just defining a variable, which we're then going to use to tell PHP which to, which file to include. Um, so for the sake of testing, just for the final time, let me just do echo include file down here, and we can reload our page, and we should see that the file that will be included is my. I'm not sure if that's coming any clearer, but the full full server path to the core folder. So this bit here is the value of core path. Then we have pages. Then this bit here is the value of get page. Then we append dot page dot ink dot php. So we include the whole thing, put it all together. We get the path to this uh, page folder that I had open a moment ago. Page folder um, login dot page file. Yeah. So final step is to well remove this and then go to our index.php and then in this block we're going to do include include file okay so now if we reload our page again we should see the form and the header so silly mistake aside that's now working so all we need to do next is add the form elements for um, well the rest of our oops the rest of our um, what am I saying? The rest of our form. So each element is going to be on a new line or in a div. So I'll just add these. And this one is also going to have a label. Actually, let's do the input first. Makes more sense. So the, this one is going to be the password. So it's going to have a type of password. And its name is going to be user password. Its ID is going to be the same for the same reason as before. Okay, and the label is going to be a label for the user password and its content is going to be password. Okay, so that's that. Typo is fixed. And then in the final line, um, we're going to have just the submit button. So, furious typing, which is why I'm making so many mistakes. So it's going to be input type of submit, and its value is going to be equal to login. Okay, there we go. So let's reload this once more. 
That's the reason I don't usually include the HTML, just by the way, and it takes a long time to type out. And it's not that interesting. Hmm. Okay, so there we go. We've got a login form, um, and that is pretty much it for the template system now. Um, I suppose what we could do is for the sake of testing the template system, we could include we could also code out the HTML part of the logout page, which I haven't got open, but we can do that pretty simply. So if we just go to our um, code again, or actually I have to go to the folder to open the logout page. So let's just go into the core folder and pages and open logout. Okay, so this is our logout page, um, and all we need to do on this page is add a very simple success message, which is div class message um, and also we need to add a second class to this which is done by doing this with a space just separate them and the message is going to be you have logged out I'll explain these classes in a moment as well so don't worry about that spell you right and if we just reload our page now I've already gone to the logout page you can see we get this sort of slightly nice ish looking box telling the user that they have logged out um, I think, had it said, I think it said you have been logged out last time, but never mind. So I'll just show you the styles that make up this um, box, and we'll ignore my potential incorrect spelling of success. So let's go to the main.css, which is here, and we'll look, scroll down to the message. So this message is being applied to the div that I just typed out, and so is this success here. So the message um, because we're having two, we've got two types of message. One is errors, and one is you know good things. So red and green. Um, so the message just gives it a margin to sort of move it down on the page a little bit, and the padding to make it look a bit bigger, and then it gives it some radius to make it look kind of nice. And then the success thing here just gives it a sort of darkish green border, and also this big huge thing here is how you define a background gradient in CSS. Um, it's compatible with all browsers. I got this from a website. So if you Google cross-browser CSS gradient generator, the website that generates this is probably the top one. Um, but essentially, you put in the colors you want and then just copy and paste the CSS across. So yeah, that's what all this does. Um, the There isn't actually a compliant version, I don't think. Mm, anyway. Uh, so, that's pretty much that. So now we can just finally demonstrate the last bit of the template system, which is that we have two pages. So we can go to log out, which is this page, and we can go to log in, which is this page here. Okay, so that is the end of part two. And in the next part, we're going to code the login system. So part three will include some database stuff. So if you're bored of me trying to sort of fumble my way through explaining CSS and HTML, then. Um, well, I'm sure you'll enjoy part three a little bit more. Okay, so thank you for watching, and come back for part three.